Give it up for Alec. He's right here, man. Alec is, uh, you know, it's, um, if you were here at Sunday with us at Southern Hills, you know that Shannon highlighted Alec, and Shannon highlighted a little bit of his story. And um, not only is Alec very much involved, you know, and I said it, I wrote a, a little excerpt about Alec this past Sunday, and um, I just said Alec is, not only is he a student of mine in my student ministry, but Alec is also a friend of mine. And um, I, I love Alec, and I know, you know, the, the relationship that I have with Alec, I know that that relationship will carry for a long time into my life. And, um, you know, I know that when I die, you, you, you better be at my funeral too, so. But uh, I love Alec Seek, and um, he is a product, you know, of what we're gonna really be talking about next, next Wednesday night, but dude, you're, you're wearing it, man. And um, I'm loved by Alec, but I love Alec. And, and all of these guys on this row that know Alec personally and behind Alec, all of his life group dudes, man, they love Alec. They love him, man. So I'm gonna pray, and then we're gonna jump into uh, the message tonight. So y'all focus on me. I know you're talking to your friends, and, but I'll, I hope we got all that out of the way and that you'll just focus on me um, and what I wanna talk to you guys about tonight. So let's pray. God, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you that, uh, that God, we're here and um, you love us, and that, God, we are not known by our sin, but we are known by you. That, God, you are our defender, you are not our accuser. And, God, may we see you, and may we desire to be known by you, and may we desire to be known by the community that we're in. We love you, we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Last week, we talked about that you are not known by your sin, and I hope, I hope that everybody in this room that was here last Wednesday night, that you got that. That you are not known by your sin. That you are known by God, that he knows your name, and that he is a defender of you, and he is not an accuser of you. That God is somebody who is for you, and that God is somebody who is trying to draw you back into him. Guys, listen, listen. That God is trying to draw you back into him. And so God defends you, that you literally have a Jesus Christ who is defending you every single day. Tonight, what we're going to be talking about is not only are you known by God, but you're also known by the community in which you're in. So, some of you have heard this story before, but this story is incredibly significant to my testimony. It's a very short piece of my testimony, but it's a very important piece of my testimony. I'm in my college dorm room, I'm just out of high school, and I'm sitting in my college dorm room, and this guy named Terrence is sitting there. Some of you, you know a little bit of this story, but Terrence is sitting there across from me in my college dorm room. We lived in a campus quad, which means we had the living room, the kitchen area in the middle, and then we all had sort of our own rooms in the college house that I lived in, the college community that I lived in. And Terrence comes into my room one night, I'm sitting there doing homework, and Terrence comes into my room one night, and he sits down at my desk across from me. And I didn't know that this guy had been praying for me, or that this guy had been pursuing me in a healthy way, like wanting to build a relationship with me. I didn't know that God had put him on my heart. I didn't know, but I was friends with Terrence. Like I had a good relationship with this guy. We, we were spending time with each other, me and him and a few other guys on college. We would go out on Thursday nights together. Like Terrence was a good friend of mine. And so here Terrence is, he comes into my room and he sits down and he looks at me and he asks me this question. He says, Keith, sitting across from me, knee to knee, he looks me in the eyes and he says, what are you running from? Man, I remember that as though it happened yesterday. He looks at me and he says, Keith, what are you running from? And this was my response. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, like, what do you mean? I don't know what you mean. What do you mean, Terrence? And he asked me again, he probably asked me this question like four times. He said, Keith, what are you running from? You're running, I know you're running. And then he looks at me and he says, you know you're running. And then he asks the question again, he goes, so tell me, what are you running from? And then he finishes it by saying, I'm not leaving this room until you tell me what you're running from. Because God has put it on my heart that you're running and I'm not leaving until you tell me, Keith, who are you really? Because all in high school, man, my whole high school career, you know, last this Friday night, I know the Bremen Carrollton game, 
whatever the outcome of that is, it is whatever, but I, just that whole scene of throwing the water bottles and the water everywhere, people screaming and yelling, everybody going crazy, dude, that was my job in high school. Like when I was in high school, man, we would have these entourages, police escort to the game where all of my high school friends, we would meet at Salem High School, man, and we would get in a massive line chest painted up going to the football game and I'm screaming and yelling coming out onto the football field all the fans looking at us man we're painted up we've got the water bottles and maybe some other stuff but dude they're all there man and we're screaming and yelling dude and that was my job in high school but all throughout high school nobody knew me they knew they had an idea of Keith Trollinger But they didn't know Keith Trollinger. And so here I am in my college dorm room, and Terrence comes in, and he sits down across from me, knee to knee, and he says, Keith, he goes, you've got this great persona, and everybody knows you, and they have an idea about you, but you're not leaving until you tell me what is really going on. I think that's where a lot of us are, is that everybody in this room wants to be known. You want to be seen, right? You want to come in to the lunchroom and people will be like, hey, what's up, Lizzie? Man, you're here. It's awesome that you're here. Like, Lizzie's in the house. Everybody, let's hear it for Lizzie. Lizzie comes in, Lizzie Newburn. She's a new student at Carrollton High School. Why she wants to be, we want to be seen, right? This is why we have things like TikTok and we have things like Instagram and we have things like Snapchat because we want to be seen and we like the likes and we like the people following us and man we love for those things to grow because we want to be seen. We want to be heard. Everybody in this room wants to be heard. I love it when somebody says, and like Keith said last Wednesday night, I love that. You know why I love that? It's really selfish because I know that I'm heard. Or when people say Sunday morning, it's like what Shannon said Sunday morning. Shannon probably, loved, because he's being heard. It's like if I come to, uh, to Bremen High School for lunch and they're like, hey, did you hear? And Kel's sitting around the table or whatever. It's like, it's like let me tell you what Kel said this last week that was awesome. And Kel's like, yeah, I'm heard. We all want to be heard. We all want to be loved. We all want to hear the, the thing of saying, are you coming with me tonight, man? Because like I'm going to the game, but are you coming with me? Are you with me? Are you, we want to be loved. The hardest thing, the hardest thing, especially for guys, the hardest thing is to say, I love you. We do a great job of saying things like, love you, or I love you, man, or love you, bro, or I love you, dude, or, or um, I, you know, but we, to, to leave off the word man and just say, I love you is the hardest thing in the world for you to say. So oftentimes we have to, we have to leave off the I or we have to add the man or the bro at the end of it because that just kind of makes it a little less maybe aggressive or a little less more less intimate, man. When the reality is that everybody in here wants to be loved. We all want to be accepted. Because of where I stand, it goes back to last week's message, the woman caught in adultery. The Pharisees bring her out. Guys, listen, the Pharisees bring her out and she's sitting there and she's exposed. Her sin is exposed. And Jesus says, who else is here to condemn you? He calls out all the Pharisees. They end up leaving. And Jesus and her are the only ones standing there in the street. And Jesus says, nobody's here left to condemn you. Neither do I. Jesus is saying to her, I accept you. We all want to be accepted. To some degree, we all want this. And some of you, you're looking for it so hard. You are looking for love, acceptance, worth, and significance, and you are fighting so hard to be noticed, to be seen, to be heard, to be loved, and oftentimes, man, we are looking for it in the wrong places. And so tonight, I want to open up in Hebrews 10, and it's a very short couple of verses that I'm going to spend in tonight. We're going to break this down, and then you're going to have a chance to do something really cool that um, I don't think has ever happened in this community. So we don't know who the author is here in the book of Hebrews, but he writes this in Hebrews chapter 10. He says, let us think of ways, starting in verse 24. He says, let us think of ways to motivate one another in acts of love and good works. 
And let us not neglect our meeting together, this is community, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Two extremely simple verses. The first one that he states out, that he writes out is, let us think of ways to motivate. This word motivate, in some other translations, it means to incite. Now I know that a lot of times we see that incite, you're inciting violence, that's a negative word. But that's not what the word means here. The word in this text, that when the author of Hebrews is writing, he's saying that you would incite love. That you would incite good works. He is saying that you would provoke, that you would motivate, which is the language that's used in here. That you would incite. This is uh, inciting that you would join this community, that you would get into a life group, that you would go deeper with your life group. That we would provoke this. And so tonight, we're going to do something at the end, and you're going to have, you know, it's up to you whether you participate, but dude, we're going to provoke some movement in your life. We're going to incite and get you to move to do something. But this is what he's saying here. He is saying, maybe that I would motivate you, motivate one another in acts of love and good works. And the writer's got to be thinking, how in the world do I motivate you to love one another? How do I motivate you to do good works? And this is a question that I would ask you tonight. How do I motivate you? How do I motivate you to love the person to your left or to your right and to really get to know that person on an intimate? I love what Alex says. I know my friends intimately. Guys, listen. I know my friends intimately. And so what could I do to incite you to start knowing your friends intimately? To do good works. And so this is what he's saying. Let us think of ways to motivate one another, acts of love, good works. This is to be, this is something to be worked out. Do we naturally just love people around us? No, it often takes work to love. It often takes work to love. And then when he talks about good works, I can tell you, all of us in this room, none of us are inclined to do good works. None of us are bent toward doing good. It is a heck of a lot easier to do bad and to be selfish and to protect ourselves and to take care of ourselves versus doing good for other people. And so what the author is saying is that you would be motivated and provoked, which means that it's going to cause you some work to love. And dude, life groups are messy. I mean, if you peer into Stephen and Tucker and Kel, we've been meeting for four years, man, and it's not always roses. In fact, a year ago, it, it almost came down to a split. But we had to work at that. We had to work that out a year ago, a year and a half ago. We had to work through that as a group of guys in a spiritually mature way to say, no, we're not going to let the enemy get inside of our group, and we are going to fight for each other, dude, and it has been unbelievable ever since that day. I mean, dude, we meet for four hours. We probably tick off their parents every Tuesday night, but I promise you, every Tuesday night, starting at 7 o'clock, you, you can, I guarantee you, you, can, you pretty much can figure out where the three of us are at. And we're always meeting, and we never get done until about 10. And we always say, God, we need to start ending earlier, but it ain't going to happen. Because we can't stop talking and sharing the gospel with each other. We don't get together and gossip and just talk about whatever, dude. We're working through the Old Testament right now. We're doing good work. We're loving each other. We're motivated and incited and provoked. We provoke each other in a good way to be known. One of the things that we said last night, a provoking of good works, we were talking about this last night in group, that there are probably some of you in this room that can't go to Helen this weekend because you can't afford it. $30. And how amazing would it be if there would be a collective group of high school students who stood up in this room and said, well, I've got $30, so Keith, whoever needs 30 bucks to go to Helen, it's on me. I'll take care of it. That's love. 
plus good works. Provoked. That's what the writer in Hebrews is saying here. That's what a community does. We're a huge Jesus family. And tonight we're asking you to take that a little deeper with a smaller group of you guys. Provoked to do good works. This is attractive. Whether you like it or not, some of you, your life groups, if you've been tracking with your life group and you have this intimacy with your life group, and I hope you do, man. I love Elena's life group. She's constantly talking about the girls in her life group. She's constantly championing them and fighting for them and fighting with them and loving them and encouraging them. Why? And guess what? Their life group looks attractive. Their life group looks attractive. I know that our life group has pissed people off, but it's, that's on them, so I can't help that. But, but people want that community. The bottom line, at the end of the day, if you are in this group, if you are most, all of you in this room are part of this Jesus family, and there are people who want to experience that community, that affection for each other and that love for each other. There's no condemnation for anybody in this room. And let me tell you something. If those of you who are outside of Christ or you're on the fringe of following Jesus, if you come across a Christian who condemns you, then I would tell you to go as far away from that person as you can because they are not Christ-like and condemning you. And so if you're around people who are constantly condemning you because of what you're doing and what you should be doing and what you're not doing, I would tell you to run from them as far as you can because they're not walking out the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so the gospel of Jesus community family looks attractive. And my hope and my prayer oftentimes is that our ministry, this ministry, looks attractive to the outside world. Because nobody in here is perfect. And we are all fallen. We fall short of the glory of God every single day. It's like this quarterback yesterday. I just wanted to whisper to him yesterday. He made a couple of bad fails yesterday at practice. And I just wanted to say, I wanted to bring him over and say, man, you know what? You will never have a perfect day. You will never, ever ever have a perfect day, buddy. But you can always get better. You can always mature. But you will never, so quit trying to have a perfect day. Because we're all going to mess up. I mean, I mess up often, man. In thought, in the words that come out of my mouth. I mean, just the other day, man, I was ripping on somebody in a very meanful way. And I knew that what I was saying was hurting them. And I didn't shut it down, man. I just kept doing it. And then I had to go back and confess. And then I had to publicly apologize. And then, like I told you last week, I was accusatory toward a group of people and accusatory toward their families a couple of days ago. And I had to go back and call the people that I was gossiping about and say, look, dude, what I was doing was wrong. And I'm asking you to forgive me and to not hold it against these people. Because healthy community, man, we look attractive. When we're motivated to love and to do good works for each other, then we're known. You are known. When you are motivated to love and to do good works for each other, then you become known. There's no doubt that when you look at Alex Seek, and some of you may never know him intimately, but there's no doubt that Alex Seek is loved. And he is known, not just by his stepmom and his mom and his brother Aiden, but he is known by Jordan Hydorn, Jameson Pierce, Tucker Sullivan, Stephen Slappy, he's known by Mason Tribble, he's known, he is known, man. Matthew Albert, who's not here. And if Alec ever walks into a season like he did this past year when he lost his father, it was amazing, it was amazing when we were standing at the hospital at Tanner, and one by one, every single one of his friends started checking out of high school. And they showed up at Tanner Hospital to be with Alec. And they stood by him, we all went to lunch, and they stood by him, and life went on for all of us in this room, but there were still people standing by Alec, and Alec doesn't even know this, but I've had conversations with his friends about Alec, and then being just loving Alec and making sure that Alec is good. Do you have that in your life? Do you have the intimacy with the guy to your left or the guy to your right or the girl to your left or to your right that genuinely cares about you? Are you known in a group 
of people? Or are you merely a ride on Friday night? And so he goes, but not to have this, he says there in verse 25, to let us not neglect our meeting together, and some people do, but encourage one another. He talks about not doing this, not having this community and this fellowship. When we don't have this fellowship in this community, this is, this is what happens. Think about how what happens when we stop meeting together. And this happens with us, man. We, we talk about it all the time. And the guys that the TJ Middlebrooks and Stone and Dylan Sims and those guys on Friday night or on Sunday night, when summer hits, man, we stop meeting. And guess what? We feel the effects of not being together in community. Summer hits, sports. Sports is always, man... And you have to work through that. As a life group, as a community that is healthy, you have to work through whatever season you're in to fight for the community that is healthy for you. Because you want to be known. School work, it gets weak. The enemy begins to creep in. You get disconnected and you start to feel alone. You start to feel alone. And nowhere in Scripture does it say that you are to do life alone. Nowhere in the Bible. You can't find anywhere in the Bible that it says that you ought to walk life by yourself. Nowhere. It's a, in fact, I would, I would probably go as far as to say that it's a sin when we're not living in community. When we're not worshiping together. Man, I love you guys worshiping together tonight. I love it, man. To hear you sing. I love listening to high school students sing. But when we're not worshiping together, man, I believe in my heart that we're walking out sin. It's necessary. Community is necessary. Worshiping together, encouraging each other. Why? Because it's here that we become known. It's in this community that you become known. And let me tell you, dude, we are fighting hard for you to be known this year. You as every high school student, guys, listen, every high school student in this room, there's probably about 160 of you tonight, and we are fighting for you to be known because we do not want you just to be a number that walks into this room, man. We don't want you just to be another face. We want you to be known. We want you to get connected into a life group with another adult, with, with somebody else that is for you. Someone who is more than just an idea. When I was in high school, man, that's all I was, was an idea to people. And it may be my fault, but nobody ever tried to get to know me. And I'm not blaming anybody for that. It's because I probably never became vulnerable with anybody else until... God put Terrence in my room. And he looked at me and he said, Keith, I'm not leaving this room until you tell me what you're running from. And in the first time in my life, I knew that I was trapped, man. I was screwed. And I was not getting out of that living room of my campus, quad, college, house, because this dude was about to un- Unravel my entire story and for the first time in my life I became an open book nothing hidden man and the freedom that came as a result of that led to stronger friendships relationships healthy community and I don't doubt that had I not had that conversation with Terrence that day just out of high school I don't think I'd be standing right Some of you, you're just an idea to people. In fact, to the people that you've been partying with, you're just an idea to them. But for them to intimately know you and to care about your heart, I don't know. Do they? Are you known? Are you loved or do you feel alone? To 
Does somebody know your story? Can you trust? Because a lot of you, man, you struggle trusting your mom and your dad for whatever reason. And there's, there may be dysfunction in your family. And you may have a really good reason that you can't trust your mom and your dad. And I'm not saying that's probably a majority of you in this room. And I hope and pray that a majority of you in this room have a healthy relationship with your mom and dad. But if statistics are right, you probably don't. And so you need somebody that you can trust that will draw you toward Jesus, not away from Jesus. Because God, all, or not, not God, but dude, Satan is very much crafty in putting people in your life that draw you towards sin, that encourage you to just partake. And that's not healthy community. That's not Christian community. That's not love plus good works. And oftentimes you're not known and you still lay your head on your pillow at night thinking and saying, nobody knows who I am. I want to read this and then this is what we're going to do. We're a little bit over, but that's okay. Just listen, I, I wrote this and I think this fits for you guys. I wrote this. This was after looking at somebody's social media one night and I became broken and very hurt, not by them, but hurt for them at what they were posting on social media. And so I wrote this, I know you're hurting, trust me, I know that you're hurting, and if I could take away your pain, I would at the drop of a pen. Your longing is so deep, it's not surface shallow, your longing to be loved is real. To be noticed is true. I know you cry at night wondering if anybody knows you, knows you like the Creator knows His creation, I see it, oh how I see it. Can I just write candidly with you? In the small time today that I've meandered through your life and what you're willing to share, to display so that the world can see, I am hurt. With the song that I hear, which poorly represents your character, with the words that I read, words that I know you don't mean to say, with pictures that I believe you truly don't want to display, I know you are hurt. Today I spoke with a generation of students that are so inspiring and unique. I spoke to them about influence, and at the core of my words, I sought to preach, to communicate to them, to give sanctuary to themselves. Now hear this. To give sanctuary, to protect themselves, to, to nurture, to stay holy. To admire themselves, their being, to protect there's a survival instinct that kicks in in the moment one feels that they're about to enter into a world of loneliness, rejection. An instinct that challenges the values of oneself, an impulse to compromise. And at this psychological game, to avoid friendlessness, one begins to negotiate themselves only to gain a community that leads to a ruined sanctuary. And I think, man, this is where a lot of us are is that we've allowed community in our life that has ruined the sanctuary that God has built in you. And I'm asking you tonight to redeem that sanctuary, to become known, not for what you can do for somebody else, but who you are in Christ Jesus. And then I end with this. Some of you are caught in the middle of this game yearning to belong to something that makes you feel whole, yet finding yourself sold to a lie that has left you feeling tarnished. The misfortune of being lost in the game is that you're not discovering the beautiful things about yourself, and eventually the words, the words that I've heard so many times, I don't know who I am, roll off your lips. So I call on you to stop today and ask yourself, is what I display about myself, is it me? Is it truly who I am? Do I know me? And if you don't, begin searching your inmost being to discover the magnificent beauty that God created in you. I know you're hurting. Trust me. I know you're hurting. But you have the ability to stop the bleeding. And God shows you your magnificence and healthy community. Man. So tonight, Jordan's going to bring out these bags. These, these, uh, I'm way over time. But here's what you're going to do tonight. There's a keychain. And on this keychain, it says, I am for. And I won't say the same, but it's funny because this person is not here tonight. And this person, honestly, has been on my mind a lot. But every one of you, your name is on this keychain. So tonight, here's what's going to happen. And if you're worried that you came in last week or tonight's your first night, don't worry about that, man. We already have plans for you. 
here's what you're going to have the opportunity to do. Is you're going to have the opportunity to grab a keychain with somebody's name on it. When you grab that name, for instance, in here I've got Dylan Sims and Dylan. Dylan is sitting, I saw him a second ago, he's somewhere original. He's back here, this is Dylan Sims. And if I grab Dylan Sims, man, then I'm, I'm stating something. I am for Dylan Sims. And you may not even know. Guys, can y'all hold on just one second? You may not even know Dylan Sims. You may not even know him. But you're saying I'm for him. And I'm going to explain to you what you're going to do when you get these. But if you are a guy, these are for the guys. And if you are a girl, these are for the girls. And so what I want you to do is we're going to give you a few minutes for you to walk up here. And only if you want to. Now, you don't have to do this. But if you're like, okay, Keith, I want to do this, and we're going to ask you to do something. We're going to ask you. There's a way that you're going to respond to this. But the goal would be that everybody in this room, somebody will have your name. Because we do not want you to be unknown in this ministry. And so for us, this is a way that we feel like we can work hard to guarantee that you are not just another face in our suite of ministry. And so if this is something for you, if you want to do this, then I'm, gonna, I'm just going to leave them. Um, actually, if I could have my helpers, um, Genesis, if you just want to stand right here, and then um, if you want to grab the guys, Colton, and just stand right here. And so I'm going to give you a chance to just respond to this and come up and to grab a name tag if you want to do that. If you're an adult leader, um, our adult leaders are going to participate in this too. And so adult leaders, if you guys want to just come up and grab one also for our adult leaders. But if that is, if you're like, man, I want one of these keychains. I don't know what Keith is about to ask me to do, but I definitely want to participate in this. And we want to give you some time right now to be able to do that.